Hello and welcome to another Behind the Bearcat, where the Northwest Career Services Office chats with Northwest faculty, staff, and students to find out about their career path and how they became Bearcats. I am Northwest Internship Coordinator Travis Klein. And I'm Hannah Christian, the Assistant Director of Career Services. And today we are joined by Lucy Hilliard, who is the Graduate Assistant for the International Affairs Office. Did I say Involvement. That Involvement. International Involvement, Involvement Center. Center. Yes. All right. I, I've yet to get a title right on this. <laughs> it's okay. so, so it's Including his to, own. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I have changed okay. my title multiple times on this. Things so. switch around. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming today, Lucy. Yes. Um, so we always start, or I always like to start, with the first job question. Okay. So what was your very first ever job? And so definition being not paid for, and your parents didn't pay you. Okay. So paid for by someone beside your parents, and okay. but you had to be paid to do it. So it was paid. Okay. Yes. Okay. So my first ever job, oh gosh, that's kind of hard. So I kind of got it through school. Uh, we used to do this thing called Link. I think they still do it. But y when you got older, like junior, senior year, you could go off campus and kind of go into a field that you liked and kind of work with them and kind of see if that was something that you really wanted to go into. And I always wanted to be a lawyer. So I went to a law firm and I worked with them. I think we had block classes, so like an hour and a half a day. And then I would go back to school, which was really fun. And they ended up hiring me to come in every day after school. And I'd work for them. I did a lot of clerical work or I ran to the courthouse, just did a lot of office stuff for them um, and they ended up hiring me and then they started paying me because we couldn't get paid to go to school so um, <laughs> it took a little bit but then that was kind of my job I worked for them through the summers um, and kind of did that so that was kind of my first job was my first actual job I suppose it was working for the law firm so, that's cool because yeah. we haven't had anybody who did any of that type of work oh, it was so, so that's not a typical yeah. high school oh yeah, yeah. no either. not that's at all cool. it was so fun it was yeah. It so was where really did you go time. to high school at? Where are you from, Lucy? Okay, I am from, I like to say I'm from Chicago because people know where that is. I'm from a suburb called Batavia. It's about 45 miles west of Chicago. Um, and it's just a small suburb, smaller than the ones around it, I guess. But it's a lot bigger than Maryville by any means. But yeah, I'm from Batavia. I went to Batavia High School um, and I graduated in 2014. So how did you get to Northwest as a student? How yes. did you find yourself here? Okay, so I was bound and determined to not come to Northwest because my brother had come here. So I was like, I'm not going to follow Jake's footsteps. I'm going to do my own thing. My parents went all over Missouri trying to find me a school. So um, in-state is really expensive, even with in-state tuition in Illinois. So we kind of decided that Missouri would probably be a better fit. Um, so we went to all different schools looking for me. Um, but then ultimately Northwest felt like home. I'd been coming here since I was little. My dad went to Northwest. He's from Council Bluffs area. So he came here and then my brother came here in... Oh gosh, I was in eighth grade, so a while ago, he came and then he graduated right before I came. So it's kind of a what was his degree in? He was marketing management, I believe, a business degree. Gotcha. Yes. And your yeah. un so you came here for undergrad. Yes. And what is your undergrad degree? In? My undergraduate degree is organizational behavior, human resource management. Gotcha. Yes. And now, what are you doing? So, as a graduate assistant, you're doing a graduate program. Mm -hmm. What's your graduate program? My graduate program is an MBA with a general management emphasis. So, I didn't really go any certain direction. I just kept it very broad, very general. Okay. Yeah. Did you work at all while you were doing your undergrad degree? Did you have any on campus employment or did you do any? I didn't really have, I would say my involvement was my job. I didn't really mm -hmm. have, um, an employment per se, but I was really, really involved. I was um, in a sorority. Um, I held many positions in that. I also was in student senate. I was the civic service chair. I was, I think overall I was in like 15 organizations in undergrad and I had like down to the second of what I was going to be doing every single day at, at a certain time. So I was really, really involved. So a lot of times it didn't leave room for a job. Gotcha. Um, but that was kind of my parents thing was if you stay involved, stay in school, different things like that, um, you know, it'll be fine. You don't necessarily need to get a job. Mm -hmm. So um, working and going to school became a concept when I got into grad school. And it was it was a hard balance to kind of get at first. It took me a long time to kind of figure out 
my mm-hmm. priorities and where that needs to be. That's good information. It is, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so did you always have grad school in mind? No. The, how did that happen? Yeah. So I, I mean, even my mom can attest to this. I was always like, I'm going to go out and get a job and get an experience before I go to grad school. I think students should go out and do that. And I was super for that. And then I ended up studying abroad when most students would be getting a job kind of that summer after your senior year of college. And uh, I was like, I have no idea what I want to do. I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go. But with HR, I kind of knew that they wanted either a lot of experience or a lot of education. Um, So I didn't really have the experience yet. I had two internships throughout um, and my second one came from my study abroad program so I didn't really have either yet so I was like well I guess I could go this way or I could go that way and I just ended up applying for graduate positions and getting the international involvement one and so that kind of made my decision for me and I was like well the experience can come with that and it can come after that but I think this is kind of the path that I need to go down if I want to stick with HR I kind of need that that more education background. So that was kind of my deciding factor was I was going to Ireland. I wasn't really in the applying for job stage yet. Um, so I thought maybe more schooling would be my, my best option. And for people that don't know, with a graduate assistantship, what what, did, what does that include for you? Like what, what do graduate assistants do on campus? So my graduate assistantship, I feel like is a full-time job. Yeah. Um, it is crazy. You do kind of a full-time job and a part-time hours. Um, so you work 20 hours a week for your department um, and you can you can do a lot of things. Mine specifically, I my main goal is the students. Um, so I advise them on studying abroad, different programs that we have, different options that we have for them, um, and kind of advising them on what I think would be the best program for them, how they can go about paying for it, how they can go about getting it to transfer back as Northwest credit, um, because we don't want to hinder their their graduation date at all. Um, So really the students are my main focus. That's what I do most of the time. Um, I think I had two students before I came here. I had almost five students yesterday. So really just advising students um, to get them started on study abroad. And then Kind of the other things that I do is planning visit days. Um, We have one of our third-party providers, or a third-party provider, EF Tours, they're coming. Um, Robert is coming on November 14th, and that we're just kind of trying to get, I guess, the word out that they're there, and that can really help us with our faculty-led trips, so they can kind of do the heavy lifting for faculty, so they don't have to plan it all themselves, so planning different things like that, or the study abroad fair, planning things like that. Um, So I have different side jobs that kind of come and go with it, but my main focus every day is my students. So where did you study abroad? I studied abroad in In Ireland. In Ireland. Yes. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. And was it... Was it with a group? Mm -hmm. So we were kind of like the first hybrid program. Um, So it was with Dr. Deb Toomey. And she took, I think there were 20 of us, 22 of us. Um, So kind of a big group. Um, And we did a hybrid program. So normally faculty-led trips are two weeks, 10 to 14 days. Just kind of depends. And you kind of do the touristy things. You go in a big group, you go to different places, different things like that. Um, So we did that. That was our first two weeks. So we would do class in the morning. We would meet at this really awesome place. Um, It was called the Epic Center, and it was like a museum underneath. And then up top, it was like meeting rooms and little bit. It was awesome. So we would meet there and do like a big group work type of thing. Everyone would have an assignment. We'd come and discuss. It was very like round table um, work. And so we would do that. And then we would have an excursion almost every day. So that would be, um, you know, going to Hoth and going for a hike and then having fish and chips by the water, or it was um, going to the Guinness factory or um, we went to Croke Park and we got to walk around the top of the soccer stadium. That was super cool, mm. but also very, very frightening. I was <laughs> I was not a fan, but I had a lot of fun. And then after those two weeks were done, Deb left and her husband, Rick Toomey, came with Dr. Toomey, sorry. <laughs> um, Rick came too, and uh, 
they kind of left, did their own thing. And then we were on our own essentially. And we all had different internships. So mine was with a consulting agency um, and kind of like a headhunter type thing. It was Wallace Myers International. Um, so I got to help with placing people in Dublin in jobs. Um, but then, I mean, we had one student who worked with Dublin's Wheelchair Association for Athletes. Uh, we had my roommate, my really good friend, Christy. She was uh, did radio because she sold advertising at Northwest, and she kind of wanted to go into sales. So that was her internship. We had some people at museums. We had one girl was doing event planning, and she was traveling almost 45 minutes to work every day. And then she, like, got to go to the events on the weekend. So that was really cool. So we all had different things that helped us with our backgrounds. um, And that was our internship. And that was the last six weeks of our program. So what was the, so let's back up a little bit. You mentioned that you had two internships. Mm -hmm. So your second one was from that Ireland trip, correct? Was Mm -hmm. it also with Wallace Myers? Yes, that was the internship. So what was the first internship that you had? My first internship was with Dee Dino. She used Mm -hmm. to work over in the Office of Student Involvement. She and, oh gosh, I'm blanking on names today. But Jeremy she, Balmy. Yes, Jeremy <laughs> had um, encryption, the, oh, what are those called? The escape rooms. Um, and so I worked with them. I did a lot with their social media and kind of getting the word out. I helped them just kind of figure out more of like, I'm not creative in any way, shape, or form, so I didn't really help with the rooms per se, but I helped more with like tweeting out things, getting them in the newspaper, definitely more social media bound and things like that. That was my first internship, Um, and I did get credit for it, so that was my first one, and then um, I kind of changed my major a little bit, and so it didn't super count anymore for what I needed, Um, so that's kind of why Ireland was perfect for me, but that was my first one, was working with them with the escape rooms. So in study abroad, you Mm -hmm. know, for students who want to do that, that's not something you just decide to do, and then it happens. It's kind of a, so what's one thing that you see working with those students that that you wish more students thought about earlier on, or wish they Mm -hmm. did earlier in the process to make your job easier? Yeah. I wish students thought that they could go sooner rather than later. I think a lot of students think that they need all of this college experience to go, uh, when in reality they just need two semesters of Northwest credit so they can go the summer of their freshman year. Um, And that's kind of nice because the general education courses tend to stay the same from country to country. You're looking at the same concepts, whereas we don't want... A teacher going and learning all the concepts that you teach in other countries and then coming back and having no idea how to have any classroom management in their own class kind of thing like that. So um, it is nice to put students in general education courses, not to say they can't go. I mean, I just had someone go their senior year and get their last couple of credits abroad. You can run into some issues your senior year because there are some classes that have to be at Northwest um, and things like that because of the way that it's set up or the tests that you have to take during that time. Um, So it just kind of depends on when it fits into your schedule. But I think the sooner you can start planning, the better, um, just because it does take a lot of effort. Some students will wake up one day and be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to study abroad and I'm going to make this decision in two weeks and I'm going to apply and I'm going to go. And I'm like, okay, right on. Are you sure that's, that's what you want to do? Like you're going to be there and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? But that's just how some people are and that's how it works for them. So that's fine. But most, most students are planning a semester to two semesters ahead. I mean, I have one girl right now we're meeting and she's not going until 2021. So um, just kind of depends. But yeah, sooner rather than later, just to kind of get the ball rolling and figure out what you kind of need, the better it's going to fit into your schedule. How did you find the graduate assistantship? Because that's sort of like finding a job, right? Did you have to apply for it? I did. did. How did that go? I did. I was very nervous. So when I started applying for graduate positions, it kind of seemed like the norm for students to go to grad school. So there was a lot of competition, I felt like, in my cohort to kind of get a graduate position. It seemed like everybody that I had gone to school with who was graduating at the same time was also looking for a position. So 
They were posted on the Northwest page like most jobs are that are open on campus. Um, And so I kind of looked through those and I applied for every graduate position that was listed. And that that was tough because I, you know, you have to change everything for the the cover letter, the resume. I mean, you guys obviously know. You should. You You should (laughs) change everything. I'll wave my finger around. I know a lot of people don't do that. I know. You should do that. And it took me a while to kind of figure that out and kind of get into that groove. And, you know, I had some people not even reach out to me for an interview even. And so I interviewed, I think I interviewed for a couple. I can't really remember. I'm like, oh, that was so long ago. It really wasn't. Yeah. So I feel comfortable with the interviewing process. Did you feel, did you get nervous about interviewing? Had you had interviewing experience before? Well, that's the thing. I've never really interviewed for a position until then because The job I got in high school, I mean, I kind of had already known them and I didn't have to interview for it. The lady at school just kind of linked it up for me. And then my other jobs, I was a nanny, so I just knew the family. So I didn't didn't have to like sit down and be like, okay, I'm from care.com. This is me. So I I really hadn't had interviews, just kind of some here and there, um, you know, for like, I remember I interviewed for an internship and things like that but um I didn't end up getting it so and it was a Skype one so those are always awkward as Mm -hmm. it is so really those were my first interviews and I remember being like okay how do I prepare like what questions are they going to ask me kind of things like that and everyone's like just be yourself and which is really good advice you should but um it's kind of hard when you're sitting there and like I had never met anyone in the study abroad office before I kind of knew Connie Murphy just because she had bopped in and out of our sessions for study abroad but other than that I didn't really know anyone in that office so it was very new to me and I was like oh my gosh what am I doing (laughs) so yeah that was it was a trying time (laughs) I remember calling my mom and she is a a teacher and she was at school and I called the front desk and her principal went to her room and was like Michelle you need to call your daughter and she's like what's happening and I was like I'm going to grad school and she's like are you serious like what is happening I was like okay sorry never mind but yeah it was it was difficult so they obviously appreciated and liked your interview Mm -hmm. so they asked you to come be the graduate assistant so you you mentioned at the beginning that work-life balance between taking grad classes so you've gone from being a student who was really involved in a lot of things Mm -hmm. so you had time management skills Mm -hmm. how was that different than working and going to school oh gosh it was so different being involved like you could kind of say like oh well I can't do that because of this other thing. But then when you have a job, you can't really, I mean, they are very, very flexible with me and I can switch my hours around and things like that. But there's so much more responsibility where it can't just be like, okay, well, I'm just not going to do that one today or I'm just not going to go to that meeting today, which you definitely have free reign of in undergrad and being involved in things like that. You can kind of say, okay, well, I really want to go to this meeting and you know, not go to this one and kind of prioritize. But when you're a graduate student, that has to come first. And that was something that was very, very hard for me at first was kind of realizing that that had to be my main priority. But then without school, I wouldn't have that. So then school also has to be your main priority. (laughs) So it's kind of hard to juggle that two things that really have to be at the top of your list as a priority kind of juggling between okay what's what's more important right now do I need to work on my homework or do I need to make sure that my students getting abroad and it kind of puts you in between a rock and a hard place because you're like well if I don't do this my students gonna fail well not fail but they might not get their passport in on time but if I don't do this assignment I'm gonna get a zero and then I'm gonna have a bad grade and then I won't be able to have a graduate position because I won't have the GPA for it so Finding that balance at first was really difficult um, and just kind of figuring out what I had time for and when I was going to be able to work and different things like that. And I was always like, oh, yeah, I can do this and I can do that and kind of stretched myself a little bit and, you know, maybe was working like 25 hours and then not working those five hours the next week, kind of working that out and just kind of getting really getting that balance of okay no you do the 20 hours you do your work you do what you can but then you also need to make sure that when you're going home at night you're not just sitting there thinking about all your students you're doing your work and you're doing what you need to be doing so um yeah I think that's a good insight I I always try to tell students the structure of school is not the same as the structure of work but it's impossible to understand that Mm -hmm. until you actually have to do it oh yeah 
And I am always worried about my students. I'm like, okay, did I do this? Did I do that? I mean, <laughs> even this past Monday, I was in Chicago. I went home for the weekend and I was flying back and I was sitting there with my parents and I was like, oh gosh, I need to tell them to do this. I need to tell them to do that. And I remember texting that we have um, we have an essay in our office. Her name's Morgan Harris. She's wonderful um, and kind of keeps me sane a lot of times, um, her and Connie together. Um, but I remember texting Morgan being like, okay, can you do this, this, and this when you get into the office? And then I texted Connie as well and I was like, okay, I just texted Morgan. Um, she needs to do this, this, and this when she gets in the office. And Connie's like, it, you're, you're off today. Like You don't <laughs> need to worry about it. And I definitely am an integrator I am not a separator by any means. I definitely bring my work home with me um, and kind of things like that. I mean, Connie Murphy's become like a second mom to me. Morgan's like my sister. Erica's my sister. I'm like really sad that I'm going to have to leave them soon, but very much an integrator. So I think that will be a good thing for me going into my field. But some people would rather have a separator who can kind of leave work when they leave work and leave home when they leave home. So this kind of depends. Any tips? Or someone, if you're, if I'm a student and I'm graduating, say in the fall or in the spring, and mm -hmm. I want a graduate assistantship, any tips for s a student looking for that? Um, apply, 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 apply for all of them. Um, even if you don't think you'd be qualified, you can learn. And I honestly would just go in and talk to the person who is giving out the graduate position and just kind of say, you know, what are you looking for? I mean, no one's going to slam the door in your face. And if they do, would you really want to work for them anyway? <laughs> Good point. Um, but I mean, everyone on campus is very open. So I think if you went in and talked to them, I remember I thought the study abroad position was going to be amazing. I thought it would work really well for me because I was studying abroad and then I could obviously have an insight for students. So I remember even emailing the current GA and just saying, hey, um, I'm thinking about applying for this position. What is kind of your day to day? What does this look like? You know, what what kind of tips do you have for me? What do you think I'd be good at the position? Different things like that. Um, and she was really helpful. She just kind of said, you know, this is what you're kind of looking at. This is what the day-to-day -day is. Um, I do think you'd be great. It's nice that you are studying abroad so you have that kind of insight of what the students are going to go through. So just ask the questions. I mean, the worst they can say is no and not respond to you, which wouldn't be very nice, but it happens. But just going and talking to them and being open, I think if they know that you're putting in the effort for the position, and they're going to be more than likely to give you an interview and kind of work with you to make it work. So, yeah, and I'd say that that's true advice for internships, for jobs, for yes. anything. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. People mm -hmm. want to, they want it, they'd rather answer your question than have an application right. that doesn't have anything to do with them or a person that's not going to yeah. fit with the organization. So, yeah, going exactly. out there and asking questions, always a good thing. Yes, I agree. I need to take my own advice. So where are you going from here? <laughs> where are you going from here, Lucy? Oh, when are you gosh. graduating? I will graduate on Friday the 13th of December. What an ominous day, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I graduated it's on like, Friday the 13th really? of December as well. Oh, Look, it worked out for Travis. Okay, yeah. Travis, you have a job. It's great. <laughs> That's do. what's going to happen for me. I'm really stuck right now. I think my biggest thing is I don't really know where I want to end up. Uh, my family's in Chicago. Some of my really good friends are in Chicago, but some of my really good friends are also in Kansas City. Um, so I'm kind of stuck between where I really want to end up. I also really would like to go abroad again and maybe work there for a little bit. So I just need to start applying um, and kind of getting myself out there, asking questions, um, you know, making the connections. But I mean, I do have those connections abroad, which is really nice. So I am working on it. I actually just gave my two weeks at my second job so I can kind of have some more time to start applying for jobs because that is a full-time job that I have found out. So yes. I think a lot of people who... A lot of people don't realize that as well, right? Finding a job is a full-time job. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. You can't just like whip out a cover letter and a resume and be like, okay, hire me. And they're gonna be like, what? <laughs> I think one thing, so maybe a piece of advice for you. Yes, please. Or anyone anything. else who might be listening. Jill Brown, previous guest, oh, boss of ours, right? Yes. Um, always says... You have to put what you want. First, you have to figure out what you're looking for, mm -hmm. and you have to put it out in the world. Mm -hmm. So take a little bit to think about what you want, and then just put it out there in the world, Lucy. Yes. You have lots of places in the world to put it out there. I know. So, and I know uh, it's scary. It it's is a scary, scary feeling. I know. But 
I also think I should probably get social media back a little bit so I can start marketing myself a little bit, but I went on a little bit of a hiatus. So what types of positions are you looking for? So your undergrads in HR, Mm -hmm. right? And then your master's degree is in management. Mm -hmm. So what type of position are you interested in? Or do you think you're going to be interested in? I think I want to be HR. Um, I think I'm good with people and kind of listening to them and kind of helping them. But what's kind of hindering me is, Anytime you bring up HR, people are like, oh, really? <laughs> you want to you wanna do that? You want to be the people that the person hates all the time? And I'm like, yes, I would love to, to do that every day. I would. Um, and I, I can fall to that, too. Sometimes people will be like, oh, I'm a teacher. And I'm like, oh, you, you are? <laughs> you want to do that? So I know what that's like. And I'm like, oh, okay, so people aren't going to like me the rest of my life. Awesome. <laughs> um, but I do I do think that I would be good in that. The other, night, the other day I woke up and I was like, I think I want to do like HR planning, like kind of things of like building teamwork and different things like that. But I mean, it's not like you're going to need that in a company at all times. So I'm like, how do I make a full time position out of this? And then like, well, maybe I could be a consultant and then I could kind of go in and do this for this company and then do this for that. And I'm like, but still people won't really like me. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in and be like, oh, okay, so this is what you should be doing. This is what you're not doing. And then they're going to be like, okay, you're going to leave in two weeks. On the flip side, you also get to hire people and you're very liked right on the front end part. So like, (laughs) hey, you gave me a job. Right. You're my favorite person. I know. know, Right. I know. It's not all negative. Well, you mentioned putting, you know, taking your work home. Higher education is a, oh. that's, that's a valued <laughs> skill in higher education where in the corporate world right. it's maybe not. So I know. Lots I know. of colleges and universities out there would definitely be looking at your skills uh, too. I did apply for a job in our office. Um, I didn't get it, but that's okay. I got my first rejection out of the way, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, just, I was just applying. Do you have any yeah. interest, industries in mind? I mean, HR is, once again, like, communication or IT, mm-hmm. any any type of company needs HR. Right. You have a specific field that you're looking for. We're trying to help you put yes, this out into know, the atmosphere. Right? I know. I just, oh gosh, I don't really know. I think a bigger company, um, kind of where I could get a lot of experience, no different two roles, days are the same. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, honestly, anywhere I would go, anywhere. Um, yes, I did reach out to one of the HR managers at Coca-Cola. So maybe I'll end up in Atlanta. Who knows? But there you go. Um, yeah, just kind of a bigger company, I think would probably be best for me. But I do love my work in the international office. So I could see myself in, you know, a higher ed role with international and different things like that. So um, I'm really open to anyone who would like to give me a job. If you're listening, I'm, I'm open to anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Any last tips tricks experiences you have to share with someone who might be listening who might be in a place where you were Mm -hmm. once as a student looking for a graduate assistantship as a student looking for a job yes i think my biggest thing is i know a lot easier said than done is just be confident in yourself and just realize that what you want and what you think you'd be great at, you probably are really good at and you are going to be great at it. So even if someone tells you no, it doesn't mean that you're bad at it. It just means that maybe you're not right for that that particular position. But the worst people can say is no. So it's okay if they tell you no and just continue to, you know, work towards it. And if it's a, a big goal that you have, like don't let anything stand in your way of it. All right. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good note to end on. Ah, so. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Lucy. And thank you. That'll do it for another edition of Behind the Bearcat. And we'll talk to you next time. Hey, guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to follow on your podcast platform of choice and on YouTube. Also, click the little notification bell on YouTube so you never miss an upload. And you can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and we have a LinkedIn page.